Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to the online worship service of Epworth United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Jennifer Bass, and it is wonderful to be with you all on this Christmas Eve. Friends, today we worship the birth of Jesus Christ, our newborn King. I invite you to take a moment as you are able to light a candle as a symbol that God truly is with us as we worship together across the miles. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. I also invite you to take a moment and get a candle that you might be able to hold in your hands. Uh, I have one of the candles that we will be lighting together at our in-person Christmas Eve service. Uh, we will be lighting these candles together toward the end of our worship service uh, this evening as we sing Silent Night. So please get a candle if you can and we will light those together and sing together toward the end of our service. I invite you to join me in our Christmas Eve call to worship. The people who once lived in darkness have been given a great light. Praise be to God who has heard our prayers. Our souls sing out God's praise. God has brought us a light of hope, love, joy, and peace. Today in this place, the light of God's love is given to us in God's Son. We shall see that light and let it shine through our lives. Come, let us worship Jesus Christ, our Savior and newborn King. Let us light the Advent candles of hope, love, joy, and peace. And today, let us light the Christ candle as a sign that Christ is born among us. The prophet Isaiah said, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We light the candles of hope, love, joy, and peace, and tonight we light the Christ candle, the central candle, and the center of our hearts and lives. May Christ, the light of the world, be the bearer of all our hope, love, joy, and peace. Behold, as the Gospel of John proclaims, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness shall never overpower it. Praise be to God. Our opening hymn as we worship today, Away in the Manger. Let's praise God together. invite you to hear these classic words of the Christmas nativity story 
from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Let's take a couple moments and let's pray together this evening. Gracious God, this Christmas Eve, our hearts are overflowing with gratitude for the birth of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. God, thank you for sending Jesus into human history, a newborn King, to be born to set your people free. God, we are so grateful. Lord, we have been preparing and waiting and watching these many weeks for the birth of your son. And so tonight, we have made room in our hearts and in our homes. And we say, welcome, Jesus. God, thank you for the final arrival of this night. Thank you for sending your spirit to be with us through this season of Advent as we have waited and watched and prepared. Thank you for the hope, love, joy, and peace that is ours because of your Son. Thank you for your gifts of salvation and eternal life that are ours because of your Son. God, thank you so much for Christmas. We are, we are so thankful and so blessed by your love and by your presence among us. So tonight our hearts are very full and we just say thanks. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, a young boy was writing a letter to God about the Christmas presents he wanted very badly. 
I've been extremely good for six months now, he wrote to God. Then, after a moment's reflection, he crossed out six months and he wrote three months. He paused again, crossed out three months and wrote two weeks. There was yet another pause and he crossed out two weeks altogether. The young boy got up from the table and went over to the nativity scene that had figurines of Mary and Joseph. He picked up the figure of Mary, wrapped it gently in a cloth, and put it in a drawer in his room. He then went back to his writing and he started again. Dear God, if you ever want to see your mother again... <laughs> Throughout the season of Advent, as we have been preparing our hearts and homes for the birth of Jesus, here at Epworth, we have been focusing on the beautiful Christmas hymn, O Holy Night. We have been reading and reflecting on several of the scriptures that foretold Jesus' birth into human history. And I wonder if your Advent season has been entirely holy. I confess mine was not this year. My Advent 2023 contained some hurry and scurry, some hustle and bustle, and some things that upon honest reflection were not that important compared to trying to focus more on Jesus Christ. Sometimes my attitudes were not so very holy. Maybe someone out there found themselves in the same boat as me once or twice this December. But friends, here we are on Christmas Eve. And so tonight we celebrate that Christ is born. The moment we have been waiting for and preparing for has finally arrived. And the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ is that we are infinitely loved by the one who created us. And God sent his son so that we might know God's love. John 3, 16 and 17 tell us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through his Son the world would be saved. And so I invite you to just take a big, deep breath in with me and let it out. This is a holy night, and it's holy because the presence of Jesus makes it holy. The songwriter of O Holy Night, Placide Capot de Roquemar, a Frenchman, wrote that Christ was born on a holy night, a night set apart from all other nights. And what made that night holy was not that every human circumstance was going perfectly right. I have deeply empathized with Mother Mary this year. But the night was holy because there was nothing ordinary about Jesus. Jesus was pure and perfect. He was God's own son. And God had sent this newborn baby into our world on a mission to be the savior of the world. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he, till Christ appeared and the soul felt its worth. That's how American translator John Sullivan Dwight translated Placide Capot's lyrics. Ever since the beginning of human existence, the world had been in a state of sin and error. Nothing was easy. Everything was toil. We worked to live and to exist. We dealt with pain and consequences. Gathering daily bread brought sweat to our faces. And the destiny for each person was to return to the dust from which we came. John Sullivan Dwight used a word that we don't really use very often nowadays, the word pining, which means to suffer a mental, physical, and emotional decline, to waste away in waiting, to suffer from a broken heart. 
In other words, we pined away because we felt separated from God and our hearts and souls were deeply hurting. But as the song says, everything changed on that O oh, holy night in Bethlehem long ago when our Savior Jesus Christ was born. When Jesus appeared, our souls felt their worth. Our broken hearts were mended. Our anguished waiting was over. Hope, love, joy, and peace could flood our hearts and souls and minds. The birth of this young one in a manger in Bethlehem was God's loving reminder to us that we were not alone. God had given us a Savior, pure love in this tiny newborn child. God had given us himself. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, says the songwriter, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Sin and death had covered the world like a dark blanket, but at the birth of Jesus Christ, a thrill of hope rippled across the face of the earth. This very day in David's town, a Savior has been born, announced the angels to the shepherds on a hillside. He is Christ the Lord, they sang. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on peace uh, and on earth, peace among all whom God favors. The light of the world entered into human history and shined the light of God's good news into human hearts. You will find that baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger, they said. And it wasn't just the world that was experiencing a new and glorious morn. It's you and me, too. With the birth of Jesus, you and I no longer simply turn to dust. We instead share in salvation and abundant life and eternal glory with our loving Savior. There was a little boy who approached Santa in a department store with a long list of Christmas requests. He wanted a bicycle, a sled, a chemistry set, a cowboy costume, a set of trains, a baseball club, and some rollerblades. That's a pretty long list, Santa said. I'll have to check my list and see if you were a good boy. No, no, the youngster said. Never mind checking. I'll just take the rollerblades. <laughs> God's word in Ephesians chapter 2 reminds us that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and not by our own efforts or by our own works. Eternal salvation is not about our performance. It's something Jesus did for us in his life, death, and resurrection. Full stop. End of sentence. The writer of the book of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 6 says that you and I can have that hope as an anchor for our souls forever. Because of the birth of Christ at Bethlehem, my dear friends, you and I personally have a new and glorious morn. That's why the songwriter could say, Fall on your knees and hear the angel voices. O night divine, O night when Christ was born. The song, O Holy Night, ends with joyful praise. There is no better news to proclaim than that the curse of sin and death has come to an end for you and for me for you and me and all the generations to follow after us. We are no longer pining in sin and error. We are loved. We are saved. There is no better news to proclaim than good news for the poor, liberty to the captives, sight for the blind, liberty for those who are oppressed, and the year of the Lord's favor. Nothing compares to the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ. Friends, this is a holy night, the night when Christ was born. Amen. I invite you to 
Take your candle and light it. There we go. Let's sing together, Silent Night, and let our hearts be full of praise for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ, our newborn King and Savior. receive this blessing. May your Christmas overflow with hope, love, joy, and peace because of Jesus Christ, the newborn King. Amen.